Hey everyone, welcome back. Hope you guys are having a great Monday. The weekend is done and over with now. The markets were open today on Monday, so the miners were doing actually really good today. Bitcoin has started pumping as well, so we're going to take a look at what's going on with all of those there. And the markets were a little bit, uh, I believe they were a little bit mixed today, yeah. But the miners were up for the most part. We'll take a look at what's going on there. We also have one story to talk about here, which is going to be on uh, the New York Times article. Riot uh, Platforms has provided a statement regarding it, and they really kind of, well, went into New York Times a little bit here. So we'll get into that, read the full article here. I think it's very important. And then we also will take a look at Riot, all-time high. Previous, can it get there again? And what would it take to get there now with um, the shareholder dilution that we've had, uh, the network hash rate going up, Bitcoin price where it's at, and everything else, and how far they've grown already. So we'll get into all that. So as always, you guys know, this is not financial advice for entertainment only. Please do your own research. I'm investing in the following coins and companies for full disclosure. And let's take a look at the markets here really quick. And also, if you enjoy this type of content, hit the like button, subscribe, helps me out. So let's take a look at the markets here really quick. Markets right now, S&P was up today 0.1% to 4109. Dow Jones was up 0.3% to 33,586. NASDAQ was down actually 0.09 to 13,051. And Bitcoin is actually up, I mean, it's doing really good right now. It's up 5.04, 5.07% right now to 29,767. So it is definitely pumping here today pretty good. But it is getting a little bit overheated here. It looks like the RSI on that one hour chart is back up to close to probably being around 70 right now. Um, so that's getting overheated a little bit here. If we look at also the one week chart, we can see here that we're getting a little overheated on the one week as well. We're at 69. So last time we were back here was back in November of 2021, as far as the RSI is concerned. At that time, we were obviously at 60,000 something plus. So we may need a little bit of a pullback here coming up here in the next couple of weeks. Uh, just to kind of give it a little bit of a breather, possibly. We could go up higher, but I think right now with the daily being up a little bit high, along with the four hours being way up here on the RSI as well, at 81, you can see here we've had nice, pretty much all day today, ever since this morning, we've been kind of pumping hard. We do have 44 minutes left on the day. We'll see if we can close above our resistance line, which is at 28,600. I expect it to close now, being that far, unless something really happens here in the last 40 some minutes and we have a big drop, but I expect it to kind of close above that, which is good. Uh, we could possibly go up a little bit higher, but I do believe that in the next couple of weeks, we will possibly go down a little bit more just to give it a little bit of a breather room here. On the one hour chart, you can also see that the RSI has come up to all the way 84, telling us that it is overbought right now, but it did come up to that, drop back down a little bit here and came back up with a lot more price appreciation. So that's good as well. So we do have some strength there as well. On that one okay let's take a look at ethereum here really quick as well ethereum is up 3.13 percent so it's having a pretty good day also we can see on the daily rsi is back up to where it was at 64. it's back up and the price is up a little bit higher so that's good as well four hour chart we can see here that the rsi is over 70 now looking a little bit overbought and price wise we are actually a little bit higher here than we were back here where the rsi was a little bit higher at that point but price now is higher rsi is lower so that's good and on the one hour chart, you can see here that the same thing as Bitcoin, RSI peaked kind of at 75, came down a little bit, now back up. And we are looking good there as well, but I think we're going to probably get a little bit of pullback. I would expect to, to see one happen. It was good that over the weekend, Bitcoin didn't do this. Otherwise, we would have had a, a CME group uh, options, right? The futures would have been, we would have had a gap there. So that didn't happen. So that's good. That's good that it's happening now on the weekend or on the weekday, sorry. So that's good there, okay? Now let's take a look at the miners. The miners had a really good day today. For the most part, some of them were actually were down. But if we look at these guys here, we can see that Annie was down 4.91% to 33 cents. Argo was actually up 2.7% to $1.52. Bit Digital was up 9.87% to $1.67, which was good as well. Then we got Bit Farms was up 4.35% to 96 cents. Cypher was up 9.01% to $2.54. CleanSpark had a really good day today. 11.07% to $2.71. It looks like maybe now it's starting to pick up back up a little bit, but we'll see how this trend continues going forward. Cores was actually down 1.07% to $0.32. Cents. Digihost was up 3.82% to $1.63. DMG was up 4.54% to $0.22. Cents. Greenage was up 9.05% to $0.45. Cents. Hive was up 8.67% to $3.51. Hut 8 was up 9.52% to $1.84. Iris Energy was up 12.04%. They had a really good day today to $3.35. Marathon was up 14.04% to $9.10. They had an excellent day today. Mawson was up 7.43% to $2.89. So, and let's see here. 
Mawson Riot was up 15.5%, so they even had a better day here. You can see how they kind of rocketed towards the end of the day here. Even though the story that came out was kind of bad about them in the New York Times, they did obviously provide some insight into it, which we'll get into here shortly. Solana was down 0.96% to 25 cents, and then Stronghold was up 7.53% to 71 cents. TerraWolf was up even better than Riot, was up 16.12% to $1.16. So that's great to see with TerraWolf, uh, you know, giving some love here, it looks like. Okay, so that's all the miners there. Let's take a look at the network cash really quick, see where that is at right now. And if we refresh this. On the seven-day average, we are still at 338 million, roughly, it looks like. And then on the one-day average, let's see what's going on there. And we're still at 375 million right now. Trend is up, okay? So let's get into our first story here, which is going to be on Riot Platforms, the statement. So the New York Times politically driven attack on Bitcoin mining is full of distortions and outright falsehoods. Let's get into it here. There's a lot to cover here. And we'll kind of go over this as fast as we can and then get into Riot, see if they can get back to their all-time highs. Okay, so, excuse me. So Bitcoin or Riot Mining and Data Center Hosting issues a statement in response to New York Times April 9th. 2023 article, The Real World Cost of Digital Race for Bitcoin, the article. Amid yet another banking crisis, Bitcoin offers consumers and businesses much needed op uh, optionality for storing value and the ability to take custody of their own assets. Bitcoin mining operations also provide, uh, also providing jobs, tax revenues, and many other benefits to rural communities, including grid stability and incentives for alternative energy production. Those are all true. This is why we were especially disappointed to read a false and distorted view of the company, of our company and our industry in the article published by the New York Times, where still the New York Times chose to publish the article with information its authors knew to be false and misleading, ignoring the factual information that we provided them. So this is where I'm going to kind of chime in on here on, on this. Anytime I think it would be great to see if companies or, well, media companies could provide sources information that sources have provided them. Right? You don't have to maybe provide who provided you those, but if you're taking notes or anything like that, the questions you asked, whatever the source was, provide those answers to you. It would be nice to also see those in another file or something like that that you can then cross-reference, right? That way there's full disclosure, and then that way you don't have issues like this like we have now. Okay, so continuing on here, uh, to be clear, our Bitcoin mining operations do not generate any greenhouse gas emissions similar to any other data centers for Facebook, Amazon, or Google. Yeah, we have been singled out. Our data centers use electricity from Texas Grid, which is the cleanest and most renewable energy source grid in the United States. That could be true, I'm not sure. Uh, I think they provide some information on that, but I believe it is true. We also provide, par probably participate in various programs that help to stabilize the electricity grid and actually reduce power prices, despite the, what critics incorrectly assume. Unlike other industries, we can shut down at a moment's notice, making our power available to other users and critical infrastructure during extreme weather events while offsetting losses from curtailing our operations. That is also true. And you can turn those machines off within a couple minutes, couple seconds, if you have the systems in place. We are especially proud to be the largest employer in Milam County, Texas, and that our dynamic and talented workforce is spurring economic activity that is strengthening the local economy. This reporting appears to be driven by fringe political interests, but we will not be deterred from our core mission of helping to build a global, universally accessible network for Bitcoin and supportive, resilient communities where our operations are located. In that spirit, we are compelled to publish here. So there's a link to, uh, which is here, which is all of the questions that I guess the New York journalists asked them and their responses to it. Um, I'll try to provide this link in the comments down below or in the, in the notes. I'll provide that link there for you guys. Our full response to the New York Times questions were received in the weeks prior to publication. As anyone can see, accurate information was blatantly ignored because it did not fit the narrative the New York Times was trying to spin. Right? They were trying to spin it that Bitcoin is bad, Bitcoin mining is bad, this is all bad. Uh, just more FUD, right? We wish to highlight below for the public and our shareholders the truth compared to some of the story's most glaring deficiencies, which include at least the following. So these are just a couple of the things that they want to point out, but there's possibly more in there from the notes here that you can take a look at. So number one, New York uh, Times distortion. The New York Times compares electricity usage of a Bitcoin mining data centers to people's homes. That is an arbitrary, inflammatory, and political choice. It is very telling that they compare Bitcoin miners to another New York City's worth of residents. The New York Times appears to appears unaware that this statement admits condensation towards Americans who choose to, to, to inhabit rural areas in the middle of the country. 
The obvious implication by the New York Times is that the New York City residents should be allowed to consume electricity. Data centers in rural America should not, right? That's one of those things where now electricity is being kind of politicized as well. Who can and who can't use it? This, in my opinion, is bad. It's a free and open market out there. If you're somebody's willing to provide you with electricity and all of it and you want to be able to use it, I think you should be able to use it. Obviously, we want to protect the local citizens, other businesses and things like that. So that's why a lot of the miners do curtail when needed. Okay, so continue on here. Reality. The fact is that nearly any industry that uses electricity, i.e. manufacturing, other data centers, iron and steel, chemicals, or even home air conditioners, use orders of magnitude more electricity generated by a higher percentage of fossil fuels than Bitcoin mining data centers. See Cambridge Bitcoin Electricity Consumption Index. Uh, let's take a look at that one, see if we can pull that one up really quick here. See what that one shows. Accept electricity, total worldwide consumption. Bitcoin uses 0.21% of total uh, pr energy production. And consumption is 0.63%. So very, very little there. Let's see if they got anything else here. AC uses quite a bit here, 2,199. Uh, these are, I'm guessing, an industrial terawatt per hash. Or what hours? Sorry, Bitcoin only uses 140. You got paper and pulp uses 586. Chemicals 1,349. Iron and steel 1,223. Cement 384. Data networks 250. Copper 167. Data centers 200. So you got all these other things that use a lot more. And this is actually kind of interesting here. So if you guys want to take a look at that, I'll provide the link in there as well. Okay. The New York Times appears to have singled out this industry because the New York Times has tied itself to political interests opposed to decentralization of authority. Choosing who can and cannot use energy based on political considerations is a dangerous path inconsistent with the values of free society. I agree with that 100%. Right? Uh, as long as nobody's getting hurt, I believe, and the reason that nobody's getting hurt is because we do need electricity, obviously, for hospitals, things like that, other things like that, uh, elderly homes and things of that nature where electricity is important to keep those people, uh, one, healthy, and uh, two, comfortable. So you need those things to obviously take precedence over Bitcoin mining, which the Bitcoin miners do anyways uh, right now. So that's a moot point there. New York Times distortion number two, they state that Bitcoin mining operations can create costs, including high electricity bills and an enormous carbon pollution. Reality, electricity bills have increased due to a variety of reasons, including inflationary, monetary, and fiscal policy. Russia's invasion of Ukraine and restrictive energy policies by the U.S. federal government. Bitcoin miners do not emit any pollutants at all. They simply use electricity just like, say, electric cars. Bitcoin miners actually decrease electricity bills by purchasing power at off-peak times and competitively bidding for demand response programs, which are particularly useful during peak periods. In making their claims, the New York Times relies on proprietary hypothetical simulation and failed to open source the data so that it can be properly challenged. Right, So that's not good there. Number three, New York Times distortion. In Texas, Bitcoin miners are paid by the grid operator for promising to quickly power down if necessary to prevent blackouts. In practice, they rarely are asked to shut down and instead earn additional money while doing exactly what they would have been doing anyway, seeking Bitcoin, and they can go on, a claim, go on to claim that operators made tens of millions of dollars. Here's the reality of it. This is absurd characterization. How would Bitcoin miners earn money from a program where they are, according to the New York Times, not participating. Riot is not compensated for promises. We are compensated for providing ERCOT the ability to directly manage Riot's energy load. We also invest hundreds of millions of dollars into developing our business in our Texas community, for which we are often then afforded the right to bid competitively in demand response programs, in which we are compensated for selling the curtailment decision to ERCOT. Under these programs, ERCOT controls Riot's curtailment in exchange for competitive market-based fees. Right, so there is a program in there that they work in tandem with everybody there. And basically, when demand spikes, uh, Riot and other companies can curtail at that time, selling basically back to the uh, grid, the electricity that they would have otherwise used to uh, operate hospitals, at, you know, housing, everything else uh, that's needed at that time. Uh, number four, distortion here. Bitcoin miners, Bitcoin mines bringing significantly fewer jobs, often employing only a few dozen people once construction is complete and spur less local economic development, their financial benefit fl uh, flows almost exclusively to their owners and operators. Reality, notice the selective language here often and almost. The NYT deliberately avoided citing a specific example. Had they cited Riot, they would have had to admit that Riot employees 
the right employees. Hundreds of full-time employees has used hundreds of local contractors and is the largest taxpayer in the county and school district. They were provided with this information well before publication and chose to circumvent it rather than acknowledge it. Right, so it's one of those admissions where all oh, this doesn't really sound too good for us here, you know, that they are actually doing all these things. So let's omit it and then put in these kind of vague words, often almost. Right, so you always kind of want to see um, anything you read, you really want to take with a grain of salt, I guess this is what I'm trying to say here, by any publication. You always kind of want to fact check things and look into things from other sides of perspective as well. Don't always go by just a single source on somebody because somebody might have an agenda for it. All right. Number five, distortion here. The Bitcoin business uh, promote their ability to operate in rural areas where renewable energy is abundant, but those claims have hit a hard reality. A vast majority of that renewable energy would be used even if in the absence of those mines. So fossil fuel plants almost always need to produce additional electricity as a result of their operations. They go on to state that Riot operates on 96% fossil fuel using a marginal emissions calculation. The reality is this is utterly baseless and nonsensical. Riot purchases electricity from the Texas energy grid, which uses approximately 24% wind, 10% nuclear, 4% solar. So right there, you got about a mix of 30, 38% on that. However, Riot's oper however, Riot operates exclusively in the rural areas where wind and solar are abundant and otherwise wasted during off-peak times, thereby further diversifying the grid's energy mix and leaning much more heavily on renewable sources. The NYT even admits that the renewable generation takes years to build and usually requires commitments from customers who can guarantee that they will buy the power for a decade or more. Bitcoin miners make such commitments and are ideally positioned to do so, and I agree with that as well. NYT in the source number six, if Riot had been fully operating on June 23rd, 2022, so this was last year, it would have incurred an estimated 5.5 million in fees, costs that are largely made up by the other Texans, other, other, over the course of the year, this saved Riot more than 27 million in potential fees. Reality is, um, we have, we believe this is false and de demonstrates a total lack of understanding of power markets. Riot provided the NYT with a rationale and factual explanation to clarify this erroneous statement, which can be found in the link provided above. We even noted that this, that it was unclear regarding what data they could possibly be referring to. By implication, the NYT's preferences, preference appears to be that Riot should refuse to curtail so that it pays higher fees. Yet the implication of the entire article is that Bitcoin miners should not be allowed to operate at all. Both of these alternative realities are in, incongruous and insidious. The fact of the matter is that Riot participates in many of the ERCOT's ancillary service programs, which add to grid reliability and ultimately reduce power prices, benefiting all of the tens of millions of ERCOT customers. Riot is proud to do so. So I think this was... Well, for one, I think it was needed, actually, for them to come out and say this because the story from what I've seen on it, I haven't been able to read it because I don't have access to the New York Times, but from what I've seen on Twitter and everything else, everybody's kind of jumping on the New York Times as, you know, bad reporting of this. It's just a, basically a hit piece on Bitcoin mining is what it was. So I think it's great that Riot actually provided this. There's a lot of in answers there. In the other sheet as well, there's a lot of information here. I'll provide a link to that in the description in the video as well, so you guys can take a look at it if you want. There's a lot of good stuff in there. But overall, like I said, you got to kind of look at your sources, do some due diligence on your own, find out what's actually true or what's not, because you can't get these kind of hit pieces, unfortunately. So that is it. I think this is great for right, like I said, and they do provide a lot of services, I think, as far as uh, peaker plants, right? You would normally have, need to have peaker plants, which use natural gas or coal, possibly sometimes to do um, when there's a large demand for electricity and you, need, you have a spike, you need to have electricity come from somewhere. So I think they also provide that where the peaker plants aren't used as much, which is a good, I think. Well, I know it is, right? Because you're not putting in more carbon into the air. And if they can get, obviously, the mix of solar, wind, everything else, and nuclear in there up higher, that's going to be all that better. And overall, I think the general industry has gone towards that anyways on its own. Um, so that's it. That's my take on that one. Okay. Let's take a look at uh, right here. So this kind of came out kind of nice with that they provided that article. We can jump right into here. So Riot, previous all-time high. Can it reach it again? What would it take to get there? When did they reach it? Where were they at that point as far as hash rate? Other things, we're going to look at all the information and then we're going to do some basic math here to see what the multiples were at that time at, with Bitcoin price and everything else. Where are they now? Where would they need to be? in the future for Bitcoin, well, them, Bitcoin itself, for them to reach their previous market high uh, market cap and stock price as well, okay? 
So let's get into it here. Some things I'll explain to you guys as well. And we're going to look at then and now. So we're going to look at the dates, which was on 2-17, February 17th of 2021 is when they actually reached pretty much their peak there. I'm using the closing price, which was $77.90 on that day. They had a market cap of approximately 5.261 billion. So taking a market cap, dividing it by the stock price, I'm getting the amount of shares that they had basically out at that time, which was 67.535 million. Bitcoin price at that time was at 52,170. This was actually right before Bitcoin up to like 64,000. And then we had some FUD from Tesla and others. Uh, China also banning Bitcoin miners. So they kind of crashed Bitcoin down to 30 some thousand. After that, it went back up to around 69,000 back in November of the same year of 2021. That at that time it peaked, but we didn't see that happen with Riot though. So I'm, I'm going to pull up Riot's chart here and we're going to take a look at it here on the daily. Then go back to that time frame here, if we may, here. Monday, November, so November. Let's see here. There we go. Okay. So let's take a look at this here. So this is a chart from Riot as far as their numbers were concerned. So you can see here on Wednesday, the 17th of February 21, this is when they peaked, it looks like, right around. Let me see if I can, it's kind of hard to get in on this one here really well to make sure I'm pulling the right data in. So right there, that green bar, $77.80 is when they closed on it. Their market cap at that time was $5.261 billion. You can see here that they came down, as Bitcoin did come down here a little bit, towards May and into the summer months, but then Bitcoin started going back up in November. They only went back up to 45, so about halfway to where they were prior on the price of 70 some dollars. And Bitcoin went up to 69,000, they didn't follow suit. And obviously we went into a bear market after that. And you can see that they've been bottoming out here in pretty much, uh, when was it? June was pretty low for them of 2022. And then we pretty much bottomed out in the beginning of January late December of last year. And we've been on a pretty nice uh, upwards trajectory here in the last couple of months, which was been which has been really good. Okay, so let's go back to this chart here. So that's kind of what we're looking at. They didn't follow suit in 2021 with Bitcoin going back up to 69. Right now I'm using the data for last Thursday, which was the 6th of March. So 4 6 2023. They had a market cap of 1.53 billion. Stock price was $9.16. That was a closing price as well. Shares calculated by those two numbers was 167 million. And the BTC price was about $28,053. Now, when we look at the differences between all of these metrics here, we can see that the market cap decreased by 3.731 billion, about 70%. Stock price decreased by $68.74. And we're down 88.2% from that high. Shares increased by 99.495 million, 147%. And the Bitcoin price is obviously down 24,000 and change, down 46% from that one, okay? So this is then and now, this is how we're gonna kind of calculate things and use some, some of these metrics here. So BTC rewards back then, they reported in January, I believe they reported 179 Bitcoin from my understanding was 179 Bitcoin. <clears throat> and they reported they were gonna, they're getting miners in, they're gonna be at 1.3 exahash. So I estimated they're gonna be about 100 uh, 100, 1,000 petahash, which is one exahash. And that gave us about BTC per, pa per petahash was 0.179. Bitcoin price at that time, like I said, was 52,170. Revenue for them would have been 9.3 million uh, generated then. So per share, we're looking at about $1.38 roughly in revenue for that. To this, to get to this uh, forward PE, what we're doing is taking the uh, market cap at that time right, let me see here, divided by 12 times 12, market cap divided by the monthly revenue times 12 months is what we're trying to get to. So we're kind of looking at the forward uh, part of it here. Okay, so we got 46.95 was the forward PE. Then going to now, they're mining 695 Bitcoin, which was reported for uh, March. Yep, for March. And they are at 10.5 exahash hash or 10,500 petahash. And you can see here that the BTC per petahash went down to 0.0662. And the reason for that is network hash rate has increased over that span of time. Bitcoin price is also at 28,053. Revenue, revenue is actually better for them now than it was back then. 19.4, almost 19.5 million compared to only 9.3 million. Huge difference there, huge growth also. They pretty much 10X their growth in, what is that? Basically, well, two months or two months, two years, basically you could say. 
So based on these metrics here, we're getting a forward PE for them of only 6.54 uh, multiple on that one right now, okay? So those numbers we're gonna be using here uh, down the road. Going to the next one. So what would it take for to reach their previous market cap all-time high? Well, right now their all-time high was at 5.261 billion. That was back in 2021. I'm adding 30 million shares for them just within the next year. Basically, I'm looking a year out from now, right? At that point, I think the stock would have to be around $26.70 uh, based on this information if we add the 30 million shares to it because of dilution, they have been diluting quite a bit. And I'm thinking it's gonna continue on here as well. So we're just kind of adding 30 million just for calculation purposes, okay? So that's kind of what we're looking at. Possibility at the forward PE of 6.54. So this is on the lower end, right? This is the most recent one that we have for them at ending in no, um, Thursday, ending the past Thursday. Future after having. So what we're looking here is what would it entail for Bitcoin to be at them as well, possibly after the having event, which is going to happen next year, right around this time, possibly. So we're looking a year out. Right, BTC rewards, they were at, let me see here, they were at 695 right now. They're at 10.5x the hash. So they're supposed to get to about 12.5. They could grow beyond that with the immersion cooling that they have on the miners. They could basically tune them better, get better efficiencies out of those guys. So they could go up even higher than the 12.5. I'm guessing that they're going to be somewhere around there. This is just an estimate here that 12.5, they could be higher, lower. That doesn't really matter. Bitcoin production will be around between 400, I'm guessing between 400 and 500, depending on where the network cash rate goes, right? We don't know a year out, it could increase 30% or it could increase 50% or higher. Uh, I'm kind of going with basically what they possibly could be mining with 12.5 exahash right now, and then cutting it in half and then going down a little bit beyond, beyond that. So that's kind of where we're at. 425 Bitcoin is kind of what we're looking at to then be after the halving. Bitcoin price would have to be at $155,000, they would need to be generating $66 million in revenue to get back up to a 5.17 market cap roughly where they were before, and that would be a stock price around $26.24 for that right there. And that's based on the 193 million shares is what I reported here, 197, sorry, 197.03 shares, that's kind of what we would be looking at there, and then if Bitcoin if they were to get back up to their previous all-time high in stock price, well, we're looking at a Bitcoin price of 460,000 at that point, and that revenue would be 196 million, and that would be $77.87. That's with the 6.54 multiple, which is for last Thursday, basically. Now, if we look at the multiple that they had back then in 2021, we get different numbers here as well. So in order for them to get back up to the 5.6 million in market cap, Right now, a Bitcoin price would have to be about $23, but we're using that 46.95 multiple there, which I don't think is going to be very um, possible to attain. But we're looking at it in any ways on here, and then we'll give you guys the kind of the halfway point between these, this one and the prior one. So we're looking at the stock price of about $28.56. If Bitcoin goes up to $65,000, we are looking at approximately a market cap of $15.56 and a stock price of $78.99. That's what we're getting back to their all-time high there. And then if Bitcoin goes up to 150,000, well then we're looking at 128 or 100, $182, sorry, on that one with a market cap of 35, uh, almost 36 billion in market cap on that one. I don't think this one is gonna happen. Main reason for that is I think they were reporting also that they were buying out that other business that they bought out in 2021, which was reported right before that. So the stock price was going up because of that. They also provide a lot of growth going forward. So there was a lot of hype I think the market at that time, there's still a lot of hype now for their growth, but I don't know if this 46.95 multiple is gonna be, a, uh, well, they can attain that again. So what we're looking at here now on the next slide is kind of in the, in the middle of somewhere. We had the six point something, 6.45, and the, what was the other one? 46, so we're going with uh, four PE of 26, which I think is very attainable for them. Now for them to be back at the 5.61, six market cap, Stock price would have to be basically, or Bitcoin price would have to be at 40,000 right now. That would give them revenue of about 18 million based on the 450 Bitcoin after the halving event, right? This is what they're gonna be mining. This is kind of where things would need to be. And that would give them a stock price of around 2850. Bitcoin goes up higher to uh, 110,000. This would get them back up to their old previous price of $78.38 or right around there, right where their all-time high was. 
and then the market cap would be for them about $15.4 billion at that point. Now, if Bitcoin goes up even higher, $250,000 per Bitcoin, we're looking at a market cap of about $21 billion and stock price of around $106.89. I think that is more attainable. Um, even if we go down you know, a little bit lower on uh, four PE, we could see them getting to both of these numbers here, the market cap reach of all-time high and possibly their stock price as well. Given that if Bitcoin goes up that way, it will be great because like I showed you guys here where they did grow, right? You got basically one exa hash fuel where it started out two years ago. Now they're at 10.5, gonna be at 12.5 something, going up maybe even higher than that. They are building out of facilities still to get additional uh, storage for miners and being able to hook them up down the road. We don't have anything reported as far as they're gonna be purchasing anything yet. If they do, that's definitely gonna help them out going forward and make it possibly even easier to reach the all time high, okay? So that is it. Um, let me show you also, let me see where that's at here. There it is. Let me show you guys this chart here. This is their, uh, well, the spreadsheet that I use for tracking them. Like I said, they were on th uh, Thursday. That's Thursday, it was stock price was 916, market cap was 1.53 billion. And you can see the growth that they've had here as far as Bitcoins per month being generated, which has been great. It has come down a little bit here. We've seen a lot of increase in network hash rate. That's the reason for it. And we've also seen their hash rate grow quite nicely here this past year. They started out at 3.5. They are now at 10.5. So that is almost a 3x increase in hash rate just in the year alone. So they have done a great job for preparing for the next halving event. They're going to install more miners. So like I said, I think when we get to it all, I think they will be able to possibly do this with pretty much ease, I think, right? Whenever Bitcoin starts going back up in price, the miners start to go up higher and faster than Bitcoin, and they do attract a higher multiple going into those bull runs as well. So we could see even a multiple higher than the one that had 26. We could see more like 30, 35, even as far as that goes, all depending where Bitcoin goes. If Bitcoin goes up to 250,000, 300,000, well, all bets are off, but we just don't know where Bitcoin's going to go. Okay, right now it's doing pretty good. We still have a long ways to go. We got a year before the having event. After the having event is usually when Bitcoin starts really pumping. So we'll see then. So right now I think is a good time to buy if you're buying. If not, it's a good time to do some research. And this is kind of what I do for you guys here. So I hope you guys enjoy it. If you did, hit the like button, subscribe. As always, the spreadsheet, the PowerPoint presentation will all be available to my Patreon members. Thank you to everyone there. And thank you again for watching. If you enjoyed it, hit the like button, subscribe, and I'll see you guys in the next one.